eager to pitch the Scorpion to the Saudis, as well. The company first began work on the aircraft in 2012 and flew the prototype for the first time in December 2013, but it is still looking for a launch customer after nearly three years. The US Air Force had evaluated the aircraft as part of its light attack experiment, commonly known as OX, which ended on August 30, 2017. However, the service made it clear that it did not meet the criteria to proceed to a possible second stage of that project, which has so far failed to materialize anyways. Textron says the plane, which it funded as a private venture, is both cheap to operate and maintain thanks to the use of composite materials, commercial of the shelf components, and a plug-and-play modular design that would allow a customer to readily customize the configuration to their needs and install upgraded avionics and other systems in the future. A pair of readily available Honeywell TFE-731 turbofans, more commonly found on commercial business jets, powers the aircraft, as well. Scorpion is also significantly larger and heavier than many potential competitors, especially single-engine turboprops. These include Textron's own 8T6 Wolverine and the ever-popular Embraer Super Tucano, as well as an expanding field of even lighter single-engine designs derived from crop-dusting aircraft. What this means, though, is that the jet can also has a relatively large, reconfigurable mission bay that could accommodate still in video cameras, radar and laser imaging equipment, electronic warfare jammers, or other systems. The demonstration configuration also has a retractable sensor turret under the nose with electro-optical and infrared full-motion video cameras. The Scoprian 6 underwind pylons can accommodate a variety of weapons, including precision-guided bombs and missiles and gun pods. As of June 2017, Textron had already flown the aircraft with the GBU-12B laser-guided bomb and performed a live-fire test involving the 70mm Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System 2, or APCAS-2, a laser-guided rocket. The plans to make the aircraft compatible with a GPS-directed GBU-39B small-diameter bomb and joint-direct attack munition family, as well as the multi-mode Brimstone missile and GBU-53B small-diameter bomb 2, with an air or surface search radar. The Scorpion could also be useful for low and slow armed border patrols to guard against terrorists or criminals, including those employing small boats and drones. The aircraft already features a basic weather radar, but could likely accommodate various appropriately sized military units, including advanced pulse Doppler systems such as a member of Lornado's Grifo family or the l 2 l M2032. Saudi Arabia might particularly appreciate this additional capability, since the Houthis have conducted numerous cross-border raids. On top of that, they have launched multiple attacks on coalition ships with anti-ship missiles and apparent explosive-filled remote control boats, begun laying deadly naval mines in the strategic Mandeb Strait connecting the Red Sea to the Gulf of Aden, and maybe building a fleet of suicidal drones able attack air defense sites and other targets. A Scorpion loaded with precision APCAS-2 rockets and automatic cannon pods would be a much more cost-effective and flexible option to respond to those types of threats than higher-performance aircraft and faster to respond than gunship helicopters or ground troops. And a fleet of the light attack aircraft could just help reduce the burden on the Royal Saudi Air Force's higher-performance aircraft or otherwise free them up for other missions, including standing watch against the country's top regional rival Iran. In January 2016, rebel forces claimed to have shot down a U.S. drone with an SA-2, but this incident remains unconfirmed. In October 2017, the Houthis did shoot down a U.S. Air Force MQ-9 Reaper, apparently with the man pads. The Saudis have lost nearly a dozen fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters since the intervention began in 2015, but insist that these have all been the result of technical faults or other accidents. Most recently, a Royal Saudi Air Force typhoon went down in Yemen in October 2017, with the Houthis claiming to have shot it down and the Saudis again denying this was the case. The Saudi-led coalition has also disputed that enemy action was responsible for the loss of Bahraini, Moroccan, UAE combat aircraft in the country or nearby over the course of the operation. A Jordanian F-16 crashed as well, but well within Saudi Arabia, a Saudi Scorpion with a targeting sensor package and armed with precision-guided munitions would be an ideal, low-cost option for its ongoing operations over Yemen, where it is battling Iranian-backed Houthi rebels and their allies. At present, the kingdom is using its high-performance F-15 S Eagle and Eurofighter Typhoon multi-role combat aircraft, along with older swing-wing Panavia Tornadoes, for strikes against the militants. Unlike smaller light attack aircraft such as the AT-6 and Super Tucano, the Scorpion would carry more extensive self-protection options, 
making it a more viable alternative given the potential anti-aircraft threats in Yemen. While it is unclear just how capable the Houthis' air defense capabilities are, they do have access to old Yemeni military stocks of SA-2 surface-to-air missiles, many of which they've turned into surface-to-surface -surface weapons, and an apparently growing arsenal of shoulder-fired manned portable air defense systems. As interested as the Saudis and Textron might both be in the potential deal, and as useful as the aircraft might be in regards to the present conflict in and around Yemen, politics might ultimately get in the way. There have been steady accusations that the Saudi-led coalition has either conducted itself in general disregard for civilian casualties or actively targeted population centers in Houthi-controlled areas. In the past, Saudi aircraft in particular appear to have deliberately destroyed medical facilities and other civilian infrastructure protected under international laws governing armed conflict. This has led to reports of mass starvation and horrifying cholera epidemic. As such, members of Congress, Republics and Democrats alike, have become increasingly uncomfortable with U.S. military support for the campaign, which has included aerial